Yo, you're now watching Urban Social, Urban Social TV. Now, here are some interesting facts about the mastermind, yeah. which uh, give you an idea of how important yeah. it is and how necessary that you embrace uh -uh. this principle and make use of it in the I don't know how sure long that I'm basically. here, any second can be gone. Solid. Yeah, it is solid. Um, I think definitely. Um, actually, when the book first came out, I went to the Barnes and Noble, mm -hmm. and I guess they weren't really expecting for it to sell so, out in the yeah. way that it did. So they, the Barnes and Noble, had only ordered like two or three copies. Like, can you believe that? Two or three. Two or three copies, and I'm, uh, I'm I ain't gonna even get into why I think uh, that was the case, but um, they had uh, only ordered two or three copies, so they were already sold out. So I actually ended up having to wait about three weeks okay. um, to get a hard copy of the book. But I think that it definitely lived up to the hype. And I'm not just saying that, I'm actually very hard on books. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I love the fact that it was like his real voice, like how he speaks and says things, his terminology, vernacular, yeah. all of that was kept in attack and I and kept in attack. And I felt like um, when I was reading it, I could see it. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. definitely was, I definitely think it lived up to the hype. Mm -hmm. uh, what I can say is that he kept it, like you said, he kept it original, he kept it in his voice, and it wasn't nothing that was like uncut. Like, I can remember when um, when him and Walker fell out. Mm. I can remember yep. when... Um, Twitter when, rants. Yeah, the Twitter rants. That, that went on for like a week. So yeah. I can just imagine like how it was at that point of time. And so just living, living to see him write about it, mm -hmm. it's just like crazy. Like... Yeah, and it's just one little to hype. I don't, right. I, I just don't, I don't think it should be in the 
Because maybe that gives us some food. Okay. Well, why don't you guys drop in the comments <laughs> if you feel like... It should be a movie. If you should, like, it should be a movie. That's so, definitely... Yeah. yeah. Um... I say Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, maybe we can shop, you know, we can add Netflix and add Gucci and maybe try to, like, get them to work together. And Something. Then, then me and you can, like, profit off of that. Okay, hello. <laughs> we, uh, you heard it here first. You definitely heard it here first. So, um, D, did you have a favorite chapter of the book? Favorite chapter probably was, mm -hmm. um, chapter 22. Which was? Um... It wasn't, I think it was a chapter after Brick by Brick. Um, but I would say it was more so of a, uh, yeah, go to the chapter real quick. 22. Yeah. I know it was a chapter where he was like working, he started working with Migos and, and he started letting everybody come in, in the studio. So what chapter is that? Um, was it Lemon? So Icy Boys? I think so it was Icy, icy boys. Yeah, I think it was So Icy Boys. Okay, yeah. So Icy Boys. So okay. Icy Boys. So yeah, that was um, like the chapter where he started like really pawning the craft mm -hmm. and using the studio. You can tell he started like, getting that business like mine and what right. you know, everybody come to the studio, mm -hmm. um, working it, working with everybody. Even if the artists didn't sign with him, mm -hmm. he was still willing to work with them. Yeah. And so I think that was that was a good mindset to have, like, you know, you get this one space. And you bring multiple streams. Exactly. And, yeah, so I, that was my favorite chapter. Okay. So what about you? For me, I honestly didn't have a favorite chapter. I really? just like I just like the whole book. yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. Um okay. but I will say to your point, um, I think that what made him what makes him such like an iconic artist is the fact that he said in the book is that he's so accessible and that he's so yeah. real. And you know, he felt like a lot of people gravitated to him because right. Like he said, you know, in the book, like I could be rolling, you know, in his own six in my Rolls Royce, and right, you know, right. like not not acting like I'm too big, like. Right. And that was one yeah. of my that was one of my um, my favorite quotes that he said. Another one that he said was that I really um, like was I always had faith in myself. If I couldn't get past those temporary temporary moments, eventually I'd be up again. Jail couldn't beat me. Lane couldn't beat me. Mm -hmm. No situation could beat me. I was the only one who could beat me. That's, yeah. that, I was just like, yo. That's it, because yeah. that applies to Anything everything in life. In life. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't know he was like on lean that bad, though. Yo. Up until this <laughs> point, I mean, because it just made sense, because I seen um, Keisha Kayor's video, yeah. and she was saying that's why he had gotten so, so big. So big. Yeah. Um, and I didn't even know that lean constipates you like that, where yeah. you looking all blown well, up. I think that's how uh, PMC died. You're right. So, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. It's good that he kind of learned from that. And there was another chapter in there where he was like, he learned from, you know, doing drugs and going to the courthouse all the time to see the judge. Right. He learned from both of them, and that's why he started working out more. So he right. when he was in jail. And so that's why we got the Gucci that came out. And, and everybody's like, is that a clone? Is yeah, that a Gucci? So, yeah. yeah, so that was, it, was, it was good stuff, though. Like, I think learning from those experiences, he really got to master who he was.